This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So let's move on to the second bit of IFRS 5, which deals with discontinued operations. Now, with discontinued operations, there's three things that we need to go through and consider. First of all, we need to go through and look at what the definition of a discontinued operation actually is. Uh, we then need to go through and look at when it is discontinued. So when can we go through there and begin to make the separate disclosure about this operation? And then specifically, third and finally, we need to look at what actual disclosure is required within the financial statements. So what do we show in the statement of profit or loss? What do we show in the statement of financial position? And what do we show in the statement of cash flows? OK, so let's go through number one. Uh, let's go through there first of all and have a look at the definition. Uh, and what IFRS 5 aims to do is to try and encourage earlier disclosure to give the users of the accounts that little bit more information about the intentions of management with regards to this particular operation. So what we've got there is an operation is discontinued if it has been disposed of. OK, so once something is sold, once something is closed down and it ceases operating, then it is technically then a discontinued operation. and You will make the separate disclosure. But what we have to be careful of there is that we now have this criteria about your either business or, or disposal group uh, being held for sale. OK. So what we could have there is you may have made a decision to close down an entity. Now, the issue that you've got there is that it hasn't been disposed of. So therefore, it's not a discontinued operation. But under IFRS 5 now, if it is held for sale, it will be a discontinued operation and should be disclosed separately because you have made the decision that you are going to go through and dispose of it. So remember, when we're thinking about held for sale, that's thinking about the, the criteria that we covered in the previous video, wasn't it? Whereby the entity was available for immediate sale. It could be sold in, in its current condition. Uh, the situation there whereby it was expected to be disposed of was it within 12 months. Uh, you are actively looking for a buyer of that business. So that would therefore mean it is held for sale and it would be disclosed separately. Uh, there's just all the little bits and pieces to consider along with the group of assets or individual assets being disposed of or held for sale. In order for it to become a discontinued operation, it needs to be a separate major line of business or geographical area, because if that's the case, that the results will be available. OK, and it also needs to be part of of a single coordinated plan, okay? It's a one big plan. It's not going to be sold off in stages, if you like, okay? It's one big plan uh, to dispose of that separate major line of business. Uh, just be aware, alternatively, uh, it could still be a discontinued operation if you buy a subsidiary and your view of holding the subsidiary is to buy it and then sell it in the near future, okay? If that's the case, it's held for sale and it is a subsidiary, that you are looking to resell and therefore it will be disclosed separately. However, the focus tends to be on that far left hand side with regards to a separate major line of business as part of a single coordinated plan. OK, uh, when does the operation become discontinued? Uh, well, if it's disposed of in the year, you will obviously disclose it as a discontinued operation in that year. But don't forget there we're trying to encourage earlier disclosure. So before the actual disposal takes place, you may have decided to hold that operation for sale. So in one accounting period, it could be disclosed as a discontinued operation because it is held for sale. And then in the subsequent accounting period, whereby it is then disposed of, it will also be separately disclosed as a discontinued operation in the next accounting period as well. Under the old, and I say old, they are quite old now. Rules, we only ever used to show a discontinued operation when it had physically been disposed of okay, or closed down. Now, as I've said, we're, we're encouraging earlier disclosure. okay, And that is achieved by classifying that discontinued operation as being held for sale using the criteria 
we saw in the previous video. Uh, in terms of what goes through and gets disclosed, uh, what you've got there, and the statement of profit or loss, what you see over the page in a moment that we'll talk about it, uh, you disclose separately your discontinued operation. So you show the profits or potentially losses on the face. And then you have the option to, to put the, the detail, if you like, the revenue, the expenses, the, the tax expense, either on the face, tend not to be done. It's normally done there separately in the notes. Okay. Uh, and then what you have on the statement of cash flows, you separate out the cash flows, uh, again, either on the face or in the notes with regards to the, the inflows and the outflows to do with that discontinued operation. And then on the statement of financial position, just be careful. You know, if we have disposed of the operation and there's no asset, there's no liabilities, there's nothing to disclose. But if it is held for sale, i.e. it's not fully disposed, you have that separate line item, don't we? Uh, as your discontinued operation or disposal group uh, held for sale. Okay, so you take all the assets, all the liabilities and throw them in on one line item within the statement of financial position. Okay, uh, if you're looking for examples of entities that have recently used IFRS 5, I think that the, the biggest one that you may be aware of is Tesco's. Tesco's is a large supermarket chain in the UK and overseas. Uh, I say overseas, it's starting to scale back its operations. It operated in America and it's closed down its operations in America. It operated in Korea and it's recently gone through there and closed down and sold its operations in Korea because Tesco's has been struggling and, and it's trying to focus on its core domestic market here in the UK. So if you want any examples of specific disclosures, feel free to go through and look there for, for Tesco's annual reports. Uh, just with a little bit of detail, because the disclosure for discontinued ops tends to focus on your statement of profit or loss. Uh, what you've got now is you split it into your continuing operations. So your revenue right the way down to your profit for the year. And then what you have is you have one separate line item that looks at your discontinued operations. OK, so that shows your profit could be a loss the period from your discontinued operations. And essentially that figure that incorporates the profits for the year plus any gains or losses that arise on reclassification potentially as a held for sale operation. OK, uh, the details, as we said, the details are there. They're given in the notes. So again, the detail covers the detail behind the profit or loss. Uh, it also contains the details behind the gains or the loss. And also as well, when you're looking at the notes, it should also include the tax expense in relation to the profits and the tax expense in relation to the gain on the disposal. OK, so here on the face of the statement of profit or loss, everything is shown net after tax. But in the notes, you disclose that little bit more detail. OK, excellent. Uh, question that we've got just below uh, just asks us to think about discontinued operations to determine whether or not it is or it isn't a discontinued operation. With regards to exam questions, you could have something similar. Uh, but I'd have thought more likely it would ask you to maybe put in the definition of your discontinued operation, maybe drag and drop or which of the following are the rules as part of your discontinued operation. OK, so just be aware there. Uh, in the exam, you may only get one question on it at all. Uh, so what you've got is it says explain how the decision to close the car manufacturing operation. Uh, should be treated in Angola's financial statements for December X5 and is it December X6? So straight away you are closing it. So it doesn't look like we are selling it. So it would never really be held for sale, so to speak. Uh, it's a car manufacturing operation. I presume it's part of a single plan. Uh, a car manufacturing operation is probably a major line of business, isn't it? Uh, so it, it's beginning to meet the definition of a discontinued operation. But we just need to be careful with the years in terms of X5 and X6, don't we? OK, so it says Angola's car manufacturing operation has been making substantial losses. Uh, that could be the evidence potentially of an impairment indicator, if you so wish. Uh, following a meeting of the board, it was decided to close down the operation on 
the 31st of March 20x6. So in 20x6, it is getting closed down. So in x6, it will be a discontinued operation, won't it? So, so there will be disclosure required on the statement of profit or loss of the, the losses and any gain or loss are on the disposal. So are there any, if you like, disposal costs? And in the notes, you would have the detail with, with any associated tax expense or tax savings, I suppose, if we've got costs and losses. The issue that you have, I suppose, is there in December 20x5, isn't it? Because in 20x5, it hasn't been discontinued because it is not being closed down, has it? OK, uh, the assumption is that we are still operating for those months of X6, January, February and March. So it's not discontinued. Uh, so if you like, it's not disposed of, but it could be discontinued if it is held for sale. Now, the issue that we've said already is that it is being closed down, isn't it? It is not being sold. So therefore, in X5, it is not held for sale because we are not selling. Uh, so if that's the case, then therefore, it is not a discontinued operation, is it? Uh, so even though the decision has been made, uh, we haven't physically disposed of it. Uh, we are not selling it. So we're, we're not actively selling it. It's not looking to be available immediately for sale. It's just being closed down. OK, yes, it may be part of a single coordinated plan. Yes, it may be part of a, a separate yeah, major line of business. But it is not being sold, so therefore it is not, and I emphasise, not held for sale. So it is not a discontinued operation in X5. You may go through there and disclose it within the notes of the accounts if it's an event after the reporting period and you feel that it is material then by all means disclose it, but it is not a discontinued operation. So there will be no separate disclosure within the face of the statement of profit or loss. It will just go in there within continuing operations and there may be a disclosure note about the effects as of the event after the reporting period. OK, so what we're trying to get across there is that the key to determining about your earliest possible disclosure essentially is all about whether it is held for sale. OK, if you are selling it, you need to look at the criteria for held for sale. If you're not selling it, then it is not a discontinued operation because it is not held for sale. OK, there we go. Have a couple of questions or have a go at a couple of the questions in the revision kit of the tuition provider of your choice. Uh, I don't think you'll find too many difficulties here. As I said previously, I think the difficulties will come when you look at your non-current assets held for sale being the first part of IFRS 5.